Insert disc two. One. What happened to your hair? So I was sitting in the barber shop, just you know, waiting to get my hair cut. Uh -huh. And I thought, what if I just, what if I just made it all go away? Yeah. And so, without consulting my wife, I consulted my best friend from college, and I said, "Do you think I should shave my head?" And he said, "Absolutely." That was all the that was all the inspiration I needed. Uh -huh. It didn't take nearly as long as I thought. I thought it would take a while to kind of you know get it all out of there, but it just like did it was uh, gone. And so you consulted your best friend from college, but not your wife. Not my wife. She was. Did you tell her this tale? She was not pleased. When you told I, her when about I the. Home. Did you tell her you consulted your best I friend did. from college? You I told did. her that you're a brave man. I did. I, I said she's like, why didn't you? Why didn't you call me? I said I didn't. I, just, I called Greg. Now, and, my next question. Why did you not get the eyebrows shaved off, and did you consider a full body wax? Um, I never considered the eyebrows because my eyebrows are sacred to me. They're, they're how I that's how that's how I that's how I emote with uh -huh. with my eyebrows. Um, the full body wax, I don't think I, I don't think I could handle. You know, that's that's no, that's no good. The chest wax with the, the pulling it off and the hurt. I'm anti pain. It doesn't hurt to get your head shaved. Fair enough. That's true. It hurt me a lot because I'd had that ponytail for about a thousand years. Yeah, so it was brutal. I, you know, it's funny because I can't even remember back then anymore. Like I see, I see old pictures of you, and I'm like, oh yeah, Aaron used to have long hair. Of course, your brother had a longer ponytail than you did. He was the king of the long hair for no, a long he time. Didn't. He did there at he the was, end, but he. Well, it know. was. It, Rich always told me that I had a skullet. Yeah. Well, what you did. Your, well, I hate that. <laughs> so, so your recent stylish haircut. Um, why are you ripping off my gimmick? You want a beard? You're going to gain a bunch of weight? You're going to you ham and egg it on the show? Is that what's going to happen now? Well, I don't know about the beard. The The beard was just an idea. Pishbot suggested I get some kind of soul patch. I would require you to get a soul. <laughs> oh! So anyway, did your recent trip overseas to the Big F, mm -hmm. did that uh, adjust your attitude about the head shaving? Well, did you, did you see some yeah. runway model caliber people walking around and think, so I want to be amongst these folks. You know, I did not, but on the plane ride home, I started watching Blade Runner 2049. And I haven't there, seen that yet. And there's a dude okay. in that that has a shaved head, and he just looks super, super freaky. And so as my head was getting shaved, all I could think about was, I'm going to look like that super freaky guy. This was a bad mistake. So, Have you ever seen uh, Highlander, the film? No, I've only seen the television show. The hot television show is no good, but Highlander is, is a great movie. Is that Seagal? Is he in that? No, no it's got Christopher Lambert in it. Who's but, the guy with the long black hair? Well, I don't know. Isn't yeah. the Highlander, doesn't he have kind of like an Elrond haircut? He's got, well, he's got, it goes, takes place in multiple parts of time, so his hair oh, changes. Okay. But the bad guy in it's this guy called the Kurgan. Okay? okay? It's hard to say something to be a bad guy with his beret on, but he's the Kurgan. And the Kurgan at one point shaves his head off, bald, you know, and so you, uh, he and, shaves the Highlander's head. No, he shaves his own head. Oh, and so you've got a Kurgan-esque thing going. Uh, do the Kurgans do they do they have different physical he's attributes? He's one guy, the Kurgan. Oh, okay, but or Kurgan. It, if you but want. he's not like a Klingon. He doesn't. He's a big beefy killer. Mm. Yeah. Does he look like Kojak once he no, shaves his head? No, he doesn't look like Kojak. More like Young Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Put them on the bridge. You should do this. I need to watch that again. I haven't seen that in a very so, long time. So, what were the highlights of your trip overseas? Let's hear some of the. I haven't got to hear much about your trip. I know your wife got sick. What happened there? Um, she she uh, the first night we were there, it was uh, no, it was the third night when we moved into our Airbnb. We were staying in this little loft, and like, I get real hot when I when I'm when I'm trying to sleep. You know, like it's just like I need to have air on me, either AC or a fan or something. Uh -huh. So I crank up the fan, and the fan is blowing on me, and I'm feeling good, but it's blowing on her. And like whenever she's got direct fan action, she's a slight lady. Yeah, yeah. You're not the beefy, murderous, super death machine that you are now. <laughs> that's true. That's true. This was when you had hair too. I know. That's another thing. I didn't realize this, but I get like. I've gotten cold several times today, and it's just because I didn't realize that it was like the hair locks in the heat. Wait till you go out and start mowing your lawn and start sweating. Oh my you gosh. You understand what else hair does. Yeah. It keeps sweat from just pouring into your eyes. I'm going to have to start investing heavily in do-rags, I think. Like the one Prince wore at the Super Bowl. I suggest you get uh, uh, one of those uh, summer toques that all the hipsters wear. Is that such a thing? You know, they have the little 
paint little things that come down that you can wrap around your neck. So you go I don't like think a, they wear those in the summer, do they? Absolutely. If you're a true hipster, you wear a toque <laughs> year round. <laughs> year round. <laughs> that's right. And I mean, you know, you still need to get the beard going, that's, but you've got your halfway true. home. That's true. So anyway, highlights from my trip. Uh, our first meal was at KFC. So um, that tells you. In that, France? In that was France, your first that meal? was our first meal. Why? Eep was really hungry. And in France, between noon and three, all the restaurants close. They all close. Why? Because What's happening at two and three? Between, between 12 and three, everything closes and people take a little break. Uh, and they kind of get things set up for dinner because in France, people don't eat dinner until like 10 o'clock at night. Uh -huh. And so the restaurants stay open until like two. So anyway, between 12 and 3, your options are limited. And Eep was starving. And so uh, the, the, our host, Mikkel, he was like, well, let's just go to KFC. And he was like, all right. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So KFC, interesting things about KFC. Mm -hmm. They're very stingy about the refills. Okay? You know how we are in America. I've heard free refills aren't a thing anywhere else. I've they, always heard that. That's 100% that's the yeah, case. I've heard that. Just like the, tipping is not a thing anywhere but here. True. Um, so... They have self-service machines, Yeah. but when you approach the machine and you put your cup down, there's a barcode scanner that scans the QR code on your cup, and All it right. will only dispense fluid one time per barcode. Wow. Yeah. What if you screw up when you're putting it in? You're boned? You're boned. You're boned. Can you get water out of it? Nope. Man. You get nothing, and you like They're it. They're tight with that syrup, Yeah, eh? yeah. What and kind of soda pop do they have over there? Well, at KFC, it's all the same. It's all the same. They got stuff. any AL8 over there? They don't have AL8. Um, they um, overall, I was surprised at how cheap France was compared to England. Yeah. Um, it costs far less to do everything there than it does. So in you England. could afford like two pops. I could afford. We could afford. We could spend money like like we do here. Everything costs about the same. You know, so it's cheaper there, but it's not. It's cheaper than England. Oh, I was okay. expecting it to be as expensive as England was. All right. This is in Paris. This is in Paris. So probably out of Paris, stuff's even cheaper than oh, that. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it is. Hmm. And so uh, that was, a, that was a, a great surprise. Another surprise, I don't know if it was a surprise or not, but one thing I noticed is that the French people, you know, they only work 35 hours a week. But I didn't see anybody, I didn't see anybody at work ever. Like, we were staying right in the middle of, like, a downtown area. And every time we leave, we leave our apartment at various times during the day. The cafes were full of people just smoking, drinking, talking. Right, but talking. there were a lot of people from out of town in Paris. Maybe, the, maybe the, the place was full of those people. If they were, they were all speaking perfect French. <laughs> well, yeah, but Paris is a big deal outside of, the, for the rest of France, too, right? Thought they'd come to town, like... I don't know. Maybe they were all on vacation. You're right. They could have been. But I like was... We just, go to Myrtle Beach, for example. Yeah. There's a crap little West Virginians out there drinking beer. That's and, true. That's true. You make a great point. You make an excellent point. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, and... There's a stereotype in America that like Parisians or French people in general are very rude. I did not come across that at all. Everybody was very we, friendly to we've us. We've sold their gimmick. Yeah. Now we're the jerks. <laughs> right. The jerks um, of the world. The, it's it's funny. Um, as soon as I would start to speak in my you know nuanced and perfected French, bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> It would be like, "Hello, sir. Come on in and have a seat." It would, bon it would, y'all. Yeah, the rest of the rest of the conversation would be would take place in perfect English. Can you speak a little French now I can for us? Say like. Uh, welcome to the Amigos show. I'm Bo. Do your shtick in French. Um, welcome. I don't know. It's like Benvidas or something like that. It's very similar to the Spanish. Uh, les, les Amigos. Uh, je m'appelle Bo. Uh, il il appelle Aaron. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, you're. That's horrible. I, I, that, I think that's 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 almost that's perfect. That's French. That's French. I'll let you have a mouthful of marbles. Well, when you're trying to spit those out. It's a fine line between Good. the marble mouth and the perfect Holy French. Holy smokes. So, um, but let's we, hope you never need an emergency room or visit or anything over there. We, we had we had excellent hosts the first half of our trip that drove us around to a bunch of different places. That is nice, isn't it? We saw a monastery that was built on the on this island on this bare rock, and before they built the bridge, you could only travel to the island when the tide was out. You'd literally drive across the ocean, and when the tide came in, you couldn't get out. Mm. So it was cool. Um, it was it was great. It was a great. The worst part of it, driving to freaking JFK, driving to New York City. It's not. It's not for your common West Virginian. Goof when you told like me. me your plan, because I have driven in both West, in both New York City and Washington D.C., mm -hmm. 
Because you went there, right? To, to Well, I used to live in D.C., so I know all right. about that. Well, it's horrible, too. Yeah. And you know that. Yeah. And the road system, it's like rolling a D20. Yeah. Okay, exit four? Okay. So when you told me you had a cunning plan and that was part of it, I was like, hmm. Does it seem that cunning? Right. And in retrospect, it wasn't cunning. In the future, we will either fly out of Charleston or drive up to Wilmington, Delaware, where my sister lives, and then fly out of Philadelphia because they only live like 10 minutes away from the Philly See, that's airport. no good either. You don't want to fly out of Philly. Don't go to Philly either. You have problems with most big cities in America. I, just the ones I've been to. Now, that's not true. <laughs> For example, I, I'm okay with Indianapolis. I'm okay with Houston. I'm okay with Dallas. Uh, I'm okay with Charlotte. There's plenty of big... Atlanta. I rode right through Atlanta. You know, hot Atlanta, no problem. It's just eastern cities that are troublesome. The northeastern ones. Your Bostons. Your uh, Jersey cities. Your New Yorks. Your Phillies. I don't, I don't like any of those. Why? Washington. Washington, see, I love Washington, the, the nice part. But the bad part I don't like, and getting to any part is tough. That's why you park outside of Washington to get on the train... Then you're, you're in business. You realize that that's every city, though. You just happen to have. You just happen to see the bad part of those cities. No, like no, you no. don't think Houston I'm, has bad parts? Oh, it does. No, I'm talking about just the driving part. Houston is um, the. It, it's also insane. There, listen, almost every city's got. And even Cincinnati's wacky. Yeah. Right. They're all wacky. But I know the traffic up that way is brutal. And Atlanta, too, had massive traffic right. issues. But it, you know, I've dri- I used to live in D.C. I've driven through every. Every big city on the East Coast. I used to live in Boston. I've never had the trouble that I had going on the New Jersey Turnpike between the Jersey State Line and JFK. It was the it, it was the most stressful I've ever felt, and I literally thought that we were going to die the whole time. And I was like, "This is it. We're not going to France. We're going to get in an accident. I'm driving this rental car. It's bad." Did you take out insurance on the rental car? I get it through Geico. It's it's built into my thing. Oh, so. I like to see Yeah. Yeah. So. What did you do in terms of events while you were in France? Did you attend any of shows? Or, no, uh, we, we went to the Moulin Rouge. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. And the, it's it's hilarious because the Moulin Rouge is right in the middle of the red light. Isn't district. that where all the sexy fun happens? Yeah, well, the sexy fun is all around the Moulin Rouge. The Moulin Rouge, I think, is is pretty it's it's pretty sanitary compared to a lot of the places that we saw down there. But you know how much tickets are to the old Moulin Rouge? A, a couple francs. One seventy five gets you in the door. One seventy five francs. One hundred and seventy five euro. Oh, you mean that's so that's cash like, money? That's two hundred, two, yeah, two hundred bucks Holy to go to the what show. What do they do to you in there? I, I I'll never know because I'm not going to pay that kind of money. <laughs> we I t- want to know up front before I put the money down. We took a little train, like you might see riding around the Huntington Mall. Yeah. We, t- we took that up up the hill, and uh, and 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 looked. We went to the <laughs> artist picture. quarter yeah. and, uh, and and saw like a, a, a bunch of stuff. We really didn't do. We didn't, How was the Louvre? We didn't go to the Louvre. <gasps> Yeah. Did you go to the Louvre? So, you know, it was beautiful. And yeah. I didn't want to spend all day walking around inside a museum. Yeah, after all, just the Louvre. I didn't want to do it. Come we on, didn't man. do it. We went to the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower was a mess because they're doing all kinds of construction yeah. underneath it. We couldn't get close to it. Did you go to the Arc de Triomphe? We did not go to the Arc de Triomphe. Why did you go to Paris? You could have just stood out the country and seen nice fresh well, air. Here's the way that I sightsee is probably different than lots of people sightsee. I've seen all this crap before because we have books and we have movies that show you all this stuff. When I go somewhere, I want to I want to be in the middle of normal life. I want to walk around and see the stuff that normal people see in this country. That's what's interesting to me. That's why I love going to that flea market. Who can say they've been to a French flea market before? That's cool. That's not something you're going to see on a guided tour of France. Now, Eep, she's not that way. She wants to see all the hits. How does a flea market in France differ from, say, the hillbilly flea market <laughs> that I would attend on a regular basis? Well, think about the hillbilly flea market. All right. Picture it in your mind. And then picture everything uh, everything elevated a little bit. So, you know, at the hillbilly flea market, you might see a big pile of VHS tapes. Yeah, okay? absolutely. That's right. In France, you might see... A big pile of 19th century books. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you're still seeing old stuff, but it's just a different kind of old stuff. It's sort of like when I watch that uh, interior decorating show from the UK, <laughs> and then I watch the one from here. They're doing a, 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 a 1920s house, whatever there. They're doing a house that's been there since the dawn of time, yeah. like a thousand-year-old house right. that you can't do anything to. It was really cool when we when we stayed at our apartment. 
Um, you could tell that this was a place that was used to be a bigger place that they shoeboxed up into a bunch of different apartments. Yeah. And the wood, the wood beams had carvings and stuff in them. They no looked, kidding. Yeah, they looked super old and super cool. Now, you know, getting back to the important part of this trip, the visit the KFC. What kind of, how's the chicken taste? Is it truly Kentucky Fried? That's a great question. Is the menu the same? The also, menu do, they is ha- the, do they have wine? <clears throat> they, they, they do not serve wine at KFC, but I do believe they had beer on the menu. All right. Um, and uh, I got what I always get when I'm at an overseas KFC, because I've been to a KFC in every country I've ever been to. Okay, weird. I get something called the, tor- or the, the Tower Burger. The Tower Burger is- a burger. It, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a chicken sandwich. They okay. just call it a burger. Um, it's weird overseas. Yeah. Um, so, but it's uh, a chicken sandwich. And it has um, it has avocado on it, a bunch of avocado on there. Mm-hmm. And now it's different than the Korean Tower Burger, which has um, like a flattened out cheese stick on it, like a big flat right. fried mozzarella. Um, so I always get that just to compare the Tower Burger. But they had tenders, you know, they had wings. It was your normal KFC. Um, I will tell you that at the supermarket, there is absolutely no age check on any kind of alcohol purchase. Like we went through the self checkout with wine and beer and stuff, and but that's not as big a deal over there because they no. grow up like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, you grow up, you grow up drinking from day one. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dangerous. You know, it's funny whenever you have somebody that goes to another country, even you know, for for, for a week, and they come back and they're like, "Well, let me tell you about the French," because I know yeah. I don't I don't know crap don't about know anything. That. I don't. I Did don't you see know. a lot of liquored up people walking around? Yes, um, in Paris. <laughs> I just wonder if you, anyone you, can drink. Yeah, in public, uh, public intoxication is not a crime like oh. it is here in in, the, in many cities in the United States. So we saw when we were on the subway um, going back to our place, we saw these. They were probably in their late teens or early twenties. And they were drunk out of their minds. They were drinking wine out of a box, just the full tilt. And Classy. they were singing, uh, Hey Baby. Hey Baby. Oh, yeah. They sang that about 400 times. I'll put that marching the, yeah, band before. of all things. <laughs> we did. We stopped playing and sang the chorus. Uh, so, but I mean, they could have been, they were probably tourists. When you they were that. definitely French. Yeah. They oh, they were French, French people. Yeah. Well, there yeah. You go. yeah. I tried. Um, but, uh, but that all together, Will we go back to France? I don't know. Let me ask you one more question. I have heard from a friend of mine that went to France, this has been decades ago, that it was kind of, at least parts of it were kind of dirty and like smelled kind of urine-y. Have you, did you? That, I think, I think that France has probably done a lot to, 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 to overcome that um, because it was no, the only parts that we saw that were dirty were the very heavily touristy places where there's a billion people. There are places in France, and I have a picture of this, I wish I could magically bring it up on the screen. It looks like a trash can, but it's got a little lip coming out like this, and that's a urinal. It's just, a, it's just a right there out in the open because they recognize that there's lots of people that are. And here's the thing, like in America, especially like where we are, you can go, you can find a Walmart, you can go to McDonald's, some place is going to have restrooms. In France, unless you buy something, they're not going to let you use the restroom, you mm-hmm. know. And so, but they have these like, and it's not a weird thing at all, like to have somebody just like peeing into one of these, one of these urinals that looks like a trash can. Mm. So, I mean. And the thing is, we have the self same problems in, like, say, yeah. Here it's Brisbane, like San Francisco. Yeah. Now, like in New York City, I'm sure it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, most of the stereotypes, the negative stereotypes that we all know about the French, I didn't find any of those to be true in my particular case. I've only met a couple Frenchmen in my time, but they were both real nice. Yeah, I'd never met anybody from France before. Yeah. before I went to I went school with there. a couple exchange students. Did you? From French, yeah. Yeah, but I would recommend it. Uh, you know, I think it's it's. Like I said, it's it's cheaper to to travel there than England, and I had a better time walking around the streets of France than I did walking around the streets of England. The streets of England, sorry, British people, but I didn't feel real safe all the time. Uh, there's there's we well, wearing this hat. There's there's a They're lot of there's with that. there's a lot of guys that are drunk. There's a lot of chavs. And it again, a lot of it came from the fact that I lived there, and I lived in a real sketchy area of England. So that so, that sounds more like West Virginia. Yeah, part. it was it was it was it was it was more kin to to well, West you Virginia. You've been used to that, though. Yeah, you know. but um, but anyway, I had a great time. If you and Tree ever do the Europe thing, I would highly suggest making France a part of the. We'd go to the UK. Part of it. Those are my people. 
Well, they speak your I'm language. Because I'm an angry, violent, drunk, and loud myself. That's true. You'd make a great hooligan. Yeah, I would. <laughs> if I could get into soccer, we'd be laughing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, you yeah, know, I, I, listen, I got nothing against the French. And I, the historical aspects of it, I would probably do the exact opposite you did, which is go see all the historical stuff, because I like this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I would like to, I like to visit the UK, especially... The big heavy points and castles, and so I love that stuff. I'm sure we France did, yeah. Has tons we, of cool we, castles too. There, man, you drive down the highway, and it's like every exit, there's a big sign, "Come see this castle." And um, you know what castle is in French? This is going to blow you away. Uh-huh. Chateau. So, like, we always talk about, like, oh, this is my chateau. You know, it's just like your house. Yeah. But it's like chateau means like a castle in in France. Uh huh. And you know what they call water towers? Le Chateau, which means water castle. Oh, okay. yeah, I thought that was hilarious. That's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so overall, you gave it the, the trip a thumbs up. Absolutely, and I want to thank our our um, our guests that will never listen, to, or our host that will never listen to this show, <laughs> Miguel and King. They gave up their whole house for us to stay in, and they stayed with their in laws uh, for two days. Is, yeah, so that they is were super s- duper, super uh, awesome. How did you guys know these people? Yeah, he went to he, he went to college with King. Uh-huh. Yes, the Thai girl. And oh, so, so oh, I see. Yeah, okay. and so she she married Miguel and moved to France. Outstanding. So, yeah. Outstanding. Well, that sounds great, but you know, while you were gone, I did some incredible touristy things myself. Oh, do tell. I did nothing. No, <laughs> you went to no. Tell me all nothing. about the Renaissance Fair. Oh God. Well, you talked this thing up on Facebook like it was the best thing ever. We had a good time. It's uh, uh it was a hot day. We went early. And I mean, it's funny. We you went to the place where the Renaissance <laughs> happened. That's and true. So this was the West Virginia equivalent. It was exactly what you think it is. You know, that was fun. It was that we went there, and it was uh, out in the beautiful outskirts of nowhere. But it was like farmland. Lewisburg, very nice. It was outside, way outside Lewisburg, mm. and it was out in the was middle. Was it in of Ron's, nowhere. Ron's cell or wherever you got the Amiga from? Was it in that no, area? It was, this was out in the middle of nowhere. It looked like you could have been in France. <laughs> uh, that picture you sent could have been picked, taken right where we were at. It was an old farm land, but they had it all done up real nice. They had a lake. We saw a joust. We saw a comedy st- sketch of these two nuns. Hey, nunny, nunny. Oh, it one of my funny. favorites. And did it, how did you eat a turkey leg? No, I did, it's funny we didn't. It was so hot we just didn't uh, eat that yeah, much. I did yeah. have some. Now get this. I'm sitting up there. We're getting ready to throw axes, and uh, I threw axes by the way. And so I hear that's awesome. They let you just. They're like, here's an axe. No, it's it. an an axe throwing guy, and you pay a couple bucks. You throw axes. Oh, I wow. never throw an axe. It Me neither. Cool. You just a tree so it's overhand throwing <laughs> these things. I thought, holy moly, this isn't going to do me favors. But uh, I'm so I'm sitting there with Tree and Luke, and we took our Luke's little girl buddy, and uh, uh, all of a sudden I hear pepperoni rolls <laughs> I, from off in the distance, and I look over and I see a, a chick wandering up the hill. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm like, uh, pepperoni winch, come hither. <laughs> and she goes, what'd you call me? I'm like, pepperoni winch. She goes, okay, yeah, that's me. I was like, give me a pepperoni roll. So we had a whole fresh baked. I don't know if they had those in the Renaissance. I'm guessing they didn't. Probably not, but you in the know, Renaissance of West Virginia, that's pepperoni right. roll. It was great. It was a tremendous pepperoni roll. We, I bought the kids a bunch of throwing knives and shurikens, and they just, I mean, like twenty each. So were, just, was this um, was it set up like a shooting gallery in a carnival? No, it, I mean sort of. You were throwing up against a big, a big wooden. Plank. Okay, you know, I'm just trying to just, picture it. Was it. right beside the wood. Was there was there was there like targets on it and things? No, nah, there were stars. I like painted on. Oh, okay. It but yeah, they just they you just they fling it shot. away. Yeah, it was awesome. I, and then I made sure to tell Teresa's mom. I was like, yeah, I let the kid throw knives. Oh, she was like, what? <laughs> they had an elephant you could ride. I couldn't believe that. Uh, Luke what was, kind of Renaissance fair was this? This, this is the kind that like, Hannibal would attend. Yeah, uh, uh, and it was awesome. I, but I couldn't get Luke to ride the elephant. He was afraid he, of it. Yeah, well, I that's understandable. They're they're big animals. And he also had camels and a unicorn. I didn't see the unicorn. Oh. He wasn't out. Oh. Get his horn sharpened. Yeah, uh, but uh, what was uh, the uh, entry fee to get into this thing? I think for the four of us, it was like thirty five bucks. That's not bad oh, at it all. Was, it was a bargain. Yeah, you know? but we we were there for like four or five hours, and it just got so hot. Pretty well attended. Oh, yeah. They did real well. It was great. It was great. I highly recommend it. We're going to go next year uh, on a day that's not 95. Good good. They had a mermaid in the lake trying to lure you to your death. That was kind of fun. 
Uh, <laughs> serious. <laughs> That was her gimmick. She's like, come over here. It's, it's cool in here. Was I'll she actually, did she have the tail and everything? Yeah, wow. yeah she was swimming around in there. That's crazy. They had fairy, fairy, fae folk, and they had, they had people dressed like fairies. And of course, everybody was in the long skirts. Oh, yeah. And used, Your typical used, garb. Used the cool language. Mm -hmm. So pirates and sword fighters, and it was Pretty all the stuff you would think you would see. It was cool. That's great. That's great. Yeah, maybe Eep and I will come up there, go up there with you guys next year. Yeah, it's. They, I hope they're going to do it again. It's all, it's all of June is when they do it. So it was it's, fun. It, the, the whole month of June, they're there in the field? And, the, and on the weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. You know, somewhere that I would like to go that uh, you're talking about wanting to go to the UK, I'd love to go to Scotland. Yeah. My mom yeah. wants to go real bad. Yeah. So we're, but, you know, mom has trouble getting around if we could do it or not. But it'd be fun. Yeah. That was one place I could kick myself for. I spent the whole year in England and never. I'd like to see took the all of out. England, Scotland, Ireland, everything. I'd like to see it all. It'd be yeah. great. Isle of Man. I want to go out there. <laughs> See what's kicking around the Isle of Man. Oh, Easter Island. Wherever, I go to all of it. I want to go everywhere. Just take a little boat and just drive around. I think it'd be awesome. It would be cool. Would be I cool. watch these shows on the BBC and they, it's like, we're here in, like, I watched one last night. They were in Beer. There's a town called Beer. And it, and all the houses sort of look the same. And they're on, the, they're on this, uh, on the side of this hill. And they all look out at the ocean. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, what a great place to grow up. In oh, the yeah. city of Beer. And they said this city had a lot of, uh, they did a lot of smuggling and stuff back in the day. Uh, because I guess they mine stone out of it. And so underneath the city, it's like 75 miles of tunnels mm. where they've mined all this stone. That's awesome. That We're going to cool. get that around here. We got coal mines. Yeah, you're not. But you don't want to visit a coal mine town. <laughs> no, you definitely don't want to walk down in the old coal mines. You know, let's go to Black Betsy. That'll be a good place to visit. Where's that know? place in Ohio that's still got the mine is still on fire oh, from 100 yeah, I years it was in ago? Pennsylvania. Yeah, you're Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah, um, but that would be cool. That would be cool. Well, it's not like we had a good time. And, and you know, the, before we close out, the Amigathons, what, what's the, it was 15 days, two weeks? Yeah, it's so closing we're, in. We're going to do a show next week, and then after that, it's going to be the Saturday. We're, we're going to skip right into that. Right. And you, how, we're booked for, what, 15 hours right now or more? Yeah, we're booked for 15 hours right now. And uh, so we'll go up to 24. Um, you think they'll, we're going to get booked for 24 straight hours? You never Have you know. Have you thought about the logistics of just sort of 15 hours in, in, in terms of your body? You know, and like how it's going to feel to be cooking. You're going to be, you you have to be on like all the time. Yeah. I can let off because this is it. But you have to, it's like cars. Well, like I said. you entertaining nonstop. You know, I've got the, the back end stuff running so much better than I did last year. Uh -huh. So the only thing I want to have to change is the um, is the name of the game and the game that's coming up next. I think I can handle it. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about being an entertaining personality with banter to beat the band. Oh, we'll have banter. You don't you don't need to worry about our ability to banter. We're going to have we're going to just be bantering <laughs> up. It's, After about an hour 3, I'm going to be like, "Vote, what are you doing? Shut up." <laughs> hey, Play jerk. your game, jerk. <laughs> okay, vote. No, and plus we'll have our rotating cast of characters coming in. You got to get old chat on board. I've already talked to all these goose. Yeah. But you know how it is. You know how they are, but I'm hoping to hope we get Matt and Chad. And yeah, Tree and Luke are gonna stop by. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I said free pizza, Luke was like, "I'm there." <laughs> He's in. He's in. You know, so he wants to play games. So we we should have a good time. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, we will see you again on the next Insert Disc Two. Au revoir. Au revoir.